this one. Well, hello, and you're most welcome to Gymodesen. The Gimle is completed, finally. And this means we will be doing battles with the Gimle. And I have been fixing the spelling issue, as you said. It now says Veni Vidi Vicky, as it should. In any case, um, there was also a tiny little error in uh, one engine that was blocked, so I fixed that too. Not a big deal, but that has been fixed and the workshop file has been updated. And I will just give a huge thanks to all of you who have downloaded the Gimle, which is on the workshop. Uh, it has gotten nearly 200 downloads last I checked, and I think that's super cool. We was on the first page for a little while, so thanks a lot for that. In any case, we're going to kick off the battles by first having a quick look of how the Gimle looks and what the end result of it is. This is a right sider, by the way, as you might imagine. We can slow down timer a little bit, we can check more easily. You can see here, I had to resort to uh, these blocks at this side. This is, this is only a facade for show. Um, it's only to keep the water out, you know, this side. The armor is on this side, which is of course some spaced armor. We have some angles to deflect the direction of hash shells in case anybody comes with big hash. We've got big empty space here, so we have very thin outer armor. And then we actually spent the resources on interior armor. We have staggered era at some important places, but other than that, it looks like it is. Um, we have, uh, well, we have the armaments, we have uh, uh, sniper turrets that aim underwater. We have a lot of diff flag sieves that will shoot down incoming crams. We have the stoners cram mortars to distract lambs. We have the Super Davidos version of the detonator turrets, four of them to be exact, that's the main weapon of the ship. We have some extra uh, crams to distract sieves, basically. We have the beautiful turret, the laser turret that we also used in the Draconia. Uh, we got this, the Vigoletta Marksman 5, with, uh, no, it's the Marksman 4, with, which is it now? Uh, which has 67 millimeter bullets because that's the same size of uh, bullets as the water bottle that I made look like an ammo shell that's available on the store, which is pretty funny, I thought. We have lamps uh, going on there. Uh, we have beautiful flag sieves from setup. We have some auxiliary extra cannons there, uh, some diff guns here and there just to look cool, an extra output for the laser. And that's basically that. So if we get into this ship, we should be getting back to full speed. There we go. Maybe. Well, we're getting stuck somehow. That's because we're moving. Oh, our magnet boots don't work. Okay, my boots have now latched on. So here we have some command and stuff like that. We'll just be shaking this a little bit closely. So anyways, uh, we're gonna go down here. It has some basic interiors. Um, I didn't spend too much town, uh, too much time on the interiors, or actually I did, uh, but I spent specifically most of the time in the Great Hall, which is very decorated. <laughs> here we have Captain Y sitting around. So of course, uh, the AIs are named after, are named named after the commissioned officers in the army of Jimmerism. We have, uh, for, for this build, we have uh, Captain Y, we have Lieutenant Asteria and Lut Lieutenant Tyler Russ, uh, and also Commander Jacob. That is, uh, so here is Captain Y, that's why you can steer the ship, anyways. So, uh, here we can see ranks in the army of Jimmerism. That's a uh, huge thanks to the commissioned officers, which is uh, above uh, beyond the dimensioned Admiral, Super Dave, of course, and uh, Stellar, Lieutenant C2 Venerated, Lieutenant Parba Greed, and Lieutenant Vincent Veritas and Cravey. I think we got all of them uh, now. So that's awesome. Uh, 
Thanks a lot for supporting the channel. It helps a lot. So we got some beautiful uh, interiors here, some extra 64 pounders for some reason. Who knows who put them there? Why? Why indeed? Well, we got some cool decorations going on there. We can, of course, move around the deck here. So on top of here, you can, of course, walk out and walk around. So you can check the areas outside here. Uh, you can also walk to the front here where you can sit in a little sun chair and one of the one one of the few functional um, 64 pounders there. So in all of the videos where we have battles, I'm going to show you the crafts designs uh, just to explore them a little bit. Um, this is the first battle video, so that's why we are uh, checking out the Gimle a little bit. We won't be checking out the Gimle in much detail in the later battles, so you see it here. We've got some cool um, stuff here. We have the Air Dinghy docking area, of course, which you can uh, dock your Air Dinghy to get to the Golden Hall. And as you can see here, here we have the Golden Hall. And the chef is sleeping and why do you wonder it's a golden hall? Well, if you have missed the building videos, uh, Gimle is the golden and gemstone roofed hall that is uh, in Norse mythology, the place where the worthy people reside during the Ragnarök Cataclysm. So one of the reasons why I built this ship is to beat the Ragnarök. And uh, we'll be showing a battle with the Ragnarök um, next time maybe. Uh, and see how it does against it. But I wanted to select a name that would have good chances to tackle uh, the Ragnarok. So that is why we came up with the name Gimle and that is why we have, have to have we have to have a mandatory big hall that is golden with the uh, foods. Here we can see here is the, the what we're serving today. <laughs> so Rambots eat your uh, surge protectors you won't get you won't be getting any uh, oil petrol drinks if you don't eat that you eat your surge protectors okay i stole that joke from the comment section kind of just if you wonder in any case we can walk down here uh, i wanted to make the interior walkable even though it's not very like walkable like that and i'm uh, not a usurper anymore i got them back into the rambot suit no more robots <laughs> So we have a beautiful pool table, or another courtesy from setup, as together with these beautiful uh, shelves there. So uh, some of the decorative stuff. Uh, the 64 pounder boxes too uh, is uh, courtesy of setup. So thanks a lot. I asked him to use them, and he said okay. Just so you know. <laughs> Anyways, we get out here. Uh, we can. Whoops. Well, that's faster than the stairs. Um, you can see we can walk outside here, not much interesting to do there. Uh, here we have access way to these. And uh, yeah, you can walk around at the bridge like this, it's walkable. Um, you can walk up and down to all of the areas basically, it's all accessible, uh, which is nice. There may not be the absolutely best path to everywhere, but it is accessible, so that is at least something. And here you get inside, you see the little trivia here about uh, the Gimle, and uh, then we have the interiors of the ship, which is of course not made to look super cool. We have big bulk, that's what we're doing. We try to survive by having big bulk. Have a little crane to get in some of these, and other than that, it's just armored interiors. Um, and of course we can go out here and we can reach the sun deck if we walk up here so we can sit here and have some sunshine and the entrance dock is of course here some bumping protection a little extra anchor then one can just walk in here and you'll get accessible you, you have access to the inside so we have a lot of interior armor for this thing uh, actually and less exterior armor so I made exterior armor pretty cheap just to focus on Daka. That's how it is. By the way for people who submit the ships for the Gimle battles sh check the rules. Um, I have a version that looks less cool and if you download the Gimle 
you unfortunately only have this l cool looking uh, gimlet. But if you want to make it lag less, well, you have these switches here. So this one turns off the lights. This one turns off the smoke generators. And this, uh, this will greatly improve the uh, FPS. So that's something you can do to really get uh, better FPS. Just turn off those switches. So for the official Gimli battles, uh, before we do the official battles, we'll do a couple of the unofficial ones with old foxes, like the Draconia, like the Titan Slang, like the Ragnarok. Um, and after that, we'll be getting into the official battles. And for the official battles, uh, when you submit your craft, uh, lights and stuff, video screens especially, has to be turned off. And that's to save FPS. Uh, so if you have a really decorated version, well, uh, that has like video screens that show uh, the outside, maybe security cameras, like someone posted in Discord, or, um, lights, interior lights, exterior lights, all that stuff. Uh, you'll have to submit one version that's a parade version that I will look at before the battle and then one version that's the battle version that, uh, you know, still abides by the rules, but you know, have lights and stuff turned off because otherwise it will get too bad FPS. Anyways, let's look at the competition, which today is Draconia. So here we have the Draconia. You've seen her before. We have loads of, uh, I think she has maybe no more materials or something. That's why we're acting weird. In any case, You've seen the Draconia many times. It's my previous battleship. It has sails, it has all sorts of weird weapons. I'm not particularly happy with it anymore, of course, because I've learned a lot building the Gimle. But we have a big main FPS, we have lots of crams, and we have a big array of cram mortars. Oh my god, it's a lot of cram mortars. We also have the same laser turret as the Gimle, but it has a longer, um, it has better focus. Too. We have a lot of APS for this system and the Draconia cost 1.8 million. It should actually be a lot cheaper. I added all sorts of weird missile system to this thing just to get the cost up because the initial cost was lower. Like the Gimli should actually cost approximately 1.5 million. Uh, and then I added a load of extra stuff to it just to be able to meet the limits because um, Borderwise made a uh, made this Titan Slang a lot more expensive. Uh, so then I had to match it to make it have a better chance of winning. Uh, now, the Draconia wins against uh, the uh, Titan Slang Mark II most of the time. Sometimes it loses, but most of the time it wins. Uh, but not every time, which is of course a big issue, because I want to have a superior ship. The Draconia definitely breaks the official Gimli rules. It is a lot cheaper, yes, but we have loads of water pumps in here. And water pumps is something that's actually banned for the official battles for the simple reason that they cause so much lag, it's absolutely not even funny. Uh, so yeah, that's bad. The, it, it just lags so much. It's completely insane how much water pumps lag. But that's how it is. Um, that's banned. But here it is. The Draconia. You know, maybe you don't like the design of the Draconia. But you have to give it. It's a unique design. And it has been called Killer Baby Seal. For obvious reasons. So let me uh, ditch my settings into the lowest. And let the first battles actually begin. And there we are. We're spawned in. So let the battles begin. The Gimli battles have officially begun. Amazing. This will be a long series. So I put my uh, settings back to the Dark Ages. We have really the lowest settings now. And uh, I can't imagine that the Draconia would win this. But we have to make sure because if it doesn't win we have huge problems, man. It has to win. God damn it, it's real spewing stuff. So the the Draconia, I hope I didn't mix up their names here, but the Draconia, I just can't win, man. If it wins, I'll be very sad. 
Um, the Dracone is very old and I don't think it's especially good. The only thing I can certainly say about it is that it lags so much, man. It just lags so much. And uh, yeah, so this battle will be a little bad FPS. There is a reason why we have some rules for the official Gimli battles. And that's for them to not lag too much. You can see anyways that the Gimles, this is the tournament version of the Gimli by the way, all lights are off, there is no smoke. And I turned off some uh, unnecessary uh, holograms too. Now that's not a requirement, but I turned off the interior hologram stuff that doesn't like matter much. So what will be very interesting here that the Gimli has an anti-torpedo system. which tries to shoot flak against torpedoes. The Draconi actually has a lot of torpedoes. So the Gimla doesn't have a lot of torpedoes at all. It only has some torpedo, anti-torpedo torpedoes, that's all. Right, the Draconi is down to 95% now. We got a good hit with the cram right there. So the Gimli is at 98 still, that's good. Now, the the, the Dr Draconia is a tough one. It uh, it can take a lot of beating. It's still fighting when it's despawning. This, this, uh, this is like a z zombie ghost baby seal. Killer baby seal. It's pretty insane. There we could see a death gun flying in. Here we can see the checkerboard armor. It's better to layer wood and metal and not do the checkerboards. We're gonna make a empirical testing video about that to uh, really go kill the myth with the checkerboard armor. I think the checkerboard armor had a lot of advantages before, but since a couple of updates um, with the armor stacking only being like two layers, um, there are some stuff with uh, what is it called? It's like explosive damage in tight spaces that actually can make it so that the checkerboard armor can make it so that it takes more damage. However, I will say this. If you just layer wood and metal, you save time. But if you already have checkerboard armor, it's not a big deal. It's not like it's going to make a big difference. Um, that you should know. But in any case, that will be for a future video. Uh, that's what I think at least, but we're gonna put it to the test. Um, yeah. In any case, the Raconia has checkerboard armor. And that's fine. Mixing wood and metal in general is a very good mix. Uh, that Gimle has a lot of wood. It has a lot of metal, metal and wood, but it has them in layers. So the Gimle has a layer of spore liners, uh, they're called. So we have one meter of metal and one meter of wood behind it, and that makes it so that Hesh are especially weak against the Gimle. I don't know if people still use Hesh for big battleships, but the Gimli does anticipate that. It also have a lot of bulk. Both of these ships have a lot of bulk. And the good thing with a lot of bulk is that you can make explosive damage be far away from something important. So bulk is nice. Looks like a front main cram cannon of the Draconia is gone. The main APS cannon is still fighting. Now, they kind of have the same laser. It's a little bit funny. Alright then. Whoa. Did we fire? I wonder if we're gonna fire this huge missile here anytime soon. Probably already fired. Would be interesting to follow its trajectory. It's interesting to see if the Gimli can take it away. In any case, the Gimli is at 96 percentages and the Dracone is at 88. So the uh, the Gimli has a big advantage here, of course. As was suspected, again, I would be very disappointed if the Gimli was not winning this battle. But I wonder still, will it win this battle easily? Because that I'd like. Welp. We're having some stuttering here, thanks to the Draconia. 
And I know this because I put the Gimle against itself. I put the Gimle against an, own, uh, 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 an old iteration of itself. Uh, it's on my second Gimodis channel. If you haven't seen that, you should probably check that channel. But uh, yeah, while that was cool to see, um, it also proved that the Gimle is a lot less laggy than Draconia, even though it has a higher block count. I believe. Well, Draconia 85 percentages, Gimlet 96. It's battling all, oh, none of the main turrets are really damaged. Now the Draconia has a big torpedo barrage, but they seem to be, do they despawn or do they just do too little damage? Some of them are shaped charges and that doesn't help much against uh, Gimlet. It's pretty well protected against that stuff. And of course we have the interceptors popping in there, so I guess a lot of the missiles that are incoming are just getting destroyed pretty easily. Oh, look here. Looks like the Draconia is slowly sinking. It's still... Ooh, there we have the big cram sitting, right? Draconia down to 82% just now we're lagging a lot because bad FPS is here. The Gimli is not only slow, it's very slow turner. It's a slow turner and man, it's very guilty of missile spam. It especially has a really bad small missile missile spam which just lags stuff incredibly much. That's why you're encouraged to not have missile spam, <laughs> because I know from experience <clears throat> down there that having missile spam just lags so much. Oh, here we have the really fast anti-missile missiles. I think they're really trying to target this beast here. I ended up not using the pneumatic uh, anti-missile missiles for the Gimle because they actually hit too rarely. Um, will be interesting to see will, is the, if this thing will actually get here. Wow. It's actually unable to take it out. Here you can see we have a big EMP charge, but... We're stripping away the era layer here, which would open up for APSs, but here we can see why we are having a lot of bulk. It only damaged the exterior shell of armor, and that's the point. That's why, that's why <clears throat> I'm such an advocate for bulk armor. Well, the Draconi is down to 75%. We can most certainly say that the Gimle is a much more superior ship. Uh, the Draconia will despawn very soon, -ish, I guess. Uh, its main APS cannon is now gone. Together with the laser, I'm not sure it even does damage anymore. And the uh, Superior Davidos cra cram cannons is slowly mincing this thing to pieces. Now we see two more of them popping in there. They're really dealing a lot of damage, but of course it has its VLMs, but there is no chance they're dealing much damage at all by now. But I think the reason that the that the Draconia lags so much for on my system, it's because it has like 100 water pumps in different spaces, and as soon as it takes damage, they just lag everything to oblivion. It's absolutely insane. In any case. Uh, we're going to do another battle here that's not announced by the thumbnail or the title. We're going to pitch the Gimle against two, not one, but two Megalodons. The Megalodons is a very friendly test craft because it has a lot of armor and a lot of uh, uh, firepower. So, the... like... That's one of the first ships you learn to defeat when you're building really big battleships. When you have made a ship that can defeat the Megalodon at equal cost or less, you are starting to really get there on making good battleships. 
that's a good step. I know there are a lot of people who are like very, what, what should we call, elitist in From the Depth that says that like whatever you do, it's not good enough and uh, that basically everything except uh, the three best ships this year is uh, just garbage. And I don't believe that. I, I think that all people have their different levels of playing the game. So I think that when you've made a craft that can de defeat a Megalodon at equal cost or less, well then, you're really getting there of making really good battleships. Because that is a not the best battleship. It's basically a big piece of heavy armor and alloy. Uh, but it's a strong one. It, it, it takes dedication time and good weapon choices in order to kill it. So that's why I'd say... It's a, it's a good measuring stick. But of course, there is always bigger fish and better ship builders. So whatever you do, there will always be a stronger ship. That will be probably very uh, apparent during these Gimli battles. Because I'm sure that many of the ships people send in for the official battles will absolutely defeat the Gimli. I just hope the Gimli defeats the Ragnarok. That's not the part of the official battle. Because that thing uses water pumps and all sorts of laggy stuff. But in any case, uh, we can see that the Draconia definitely lost this battle. It's also a lot cheaper. The Gimli is 2.2 million, the Draconia is 2.8 something. So yeah, it wasn't really fair. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of people are actually working on ships that are substantially cheaper than the Gimli. But still, might be able to defeat it, man. So we'll see, we'll see. But in any case, it's always good to pitch your design against your old designs to make sure that you actually made an improvement and that you're not just pretending. But this has been this particular battle. We're going to pitch the Gimle against two Megalodons just to see if the Gimle can defeat it. Because the Megalodon is like two-ish millions uh, a piece. So if the Gimle can defeat two of them, I know that I built the best battleship I ever built because the Draconia, I think it is getting pretty minced by two. I know I don't know if I even tried it. I don't know how much that will lag even. We'll see. Let's jump into that battle. <laughs> Are you like kidding me? Do you see the Megalodon down here? It's version 518. Man, th this ship has been carefully crafted. If I wow, that's cool. Sideways distance. Oh, let's increase that a little bit. They're pretty, so they don't crash into each other. That would be pretty sad. So, oh no, 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 no. This is. Oh yeah, here we have the team. They're gonna be steel striders, of course. All right then. All right, here we have the challenge. Do you see this? This is the megalodon. And the Megalodon is APS based, and that's great for me, because uh, Cram is generally a better weapon. It also has a real big missiles, that might be a threat. We might have issues with that. But anyways, this is the uh, Megalodon, it has some really scary APS guns. Uh, but I think that my armor will probably not withstand it, but I don't think it will hit much important stuff. Now, the Megalodons... 1.868 materials they cost and the Draconia is 2.2 so yeah we don't have double the uh, we don't have two times as much damage uh, coming our way or uh, what is it not damaged like materials come our way that's a good thing to test firepower 1040 and I think I have a lot of firepower. I don't know exactly how much it is, but we have 1,600. So, um, for the cost, I have more firepower, but uh, the Megalodons still have a lot. So, l without further ado, <clears throat> let's uh, make this battle go. You can see the Megalodon also has smoke going on there. We're actually going to follow these missiles, see what happens. They have loads of torpedoes too. See how our flak... Oh, there you can see the flak. 
Save scans. Ooh, ah, one of the one of the guns, one of the missiles hit here. Wow. Oh no, Captain Y is missing in action. As you could see, because it hit, uh, I just I just have to check here. <laughs> no, it's not missing in action. That's good. <clears throat> Anyways. We're gonna follow our laser here. See what the laser is doing. Wow, okay. The laser is really eating the superstructure here. They're aiming for the superstructure always. Not sure if that was my pack or their pack. All packs are blue. They're not, but the uh, explosion when they come out are blue for some reason. It's really weird. I thought the the beam of the ray should match the output flash. Otherwise, it just looks stupid to have anything else that's not blue for packs. But, well. I wonder how it looks with... Uh, here we can see we have some serious damage going on there. I think that our anti-torpedo system is not oh yeah we got a lot of damage here you can see our anti-torpedo system is not equipped to deal with that type of uh, torpedoes now it's hard to see the shots popping in because it lags a little bit too much I think <clears throat> but I wonder why the megalodons aren't shooting because the guns are working, right? Yes. They're really fast though, so they're a little bit hard to catch even. Right. Oh, you can see that turret is a little bit damaged there. Ah, I saw a shot coming in there. They're just so fast, it's hard to catch them. Same as the uh, sniper cannons for the Gimlet, they're really fast too. They also shoot underwater, so it's almost impossible to see these. Uh, and that's the sniper cannons in the front here. It's almost impossible to see them shoot. Uh, they just teleport a shell at 1,800 meters per second under the hull of the enemy ship. So it's like really quick. They have a high hit rate though. <clears throat> All right. The Gimli is at 97% and the Megalodons are 94-95. Uh, oh, one got bounced, but you see that it's disabled half of the barrels for this turret here. Yeah, you can see this turret is kind of damaged now. Oh, I'm just wanna, I just want to follow these shells here. You see, this is a... that's a hollow point or a heavy head with sabots on it. Woohoo! We got deflected! Alright then. Wanted to see if it did some damage. The other one came in here. It punched holes straight through. I hope the AI is safe. That's like a weak point, of course, but that's for most chips. Got hit by a missile there. Not sure if it hit us naturally or if it got tricked by our decoys, which are actually keeping missiles uh, away from the main body. I wonder how the torpedo situation is here. We got some more hole, holes here, but again, we're really dealing with a lot of uh, bulk. We're trying to deal with the situation with a lot of bulk. I mean. Alright. Wonder what happened with this. Did this turret get stuck somehow? That's really bad. That's not good at all. How could it get stuck? 
Oh yeah, well. If that happens again, we might need to investigate the situation. Right. I just want to follow one of these shells. There it is. It's a solid word ho warhead body sabo. It missed. Well, darn it. Wonder how fast we're here. Game time. Game speed. All right. We're at half speedish. So, I think the gimless AIs are set up to battle. <clears throat> uh, one battles the expensive craft, and one battles the less expensive craft. So I believe the big guns are actually going for this slightly more healthy version, and the small guns plus the laser goes for this more damaged version of the Megalodon. Damn. The Megalodon is really keeping its distance. It's really making us uh, miss a lot of our cram shots. Packs popping in there. Wow. Oh no. Looks like the Megalodons are having a collision soon. This is really a lot more long distance battle than I'd like, but well. There we had a pretty decent explosion, didn't we? Well, we really want to hit with the crams properly. See if we hit here. Ooh, nice hit. Didn't do that much. Really hit in the end. I think we're wasting a lot of our anti-missile missiles against the decoys too. Man, the packs just sounds really sad. They're just cracking the sound barrier in a very not charming way. Someone should make a sound mod for that. That's a good hit though. That's a pretty good hit. Then we have a lot of steam and stuff that went from that cram blast. The game is at 95% and the Megalodons are at 87 and 88. Well, individually, the game is in the lead. And I think since we target the blocks above the surface, I think we have a good chance of disabling the Megalodon's turret in a way that we may even sink them. Yeah. All right. More cram shells are incoming. This one is like sunken, basically. Bam, that's a big barrage of torpedoes. No, both missed. One overshot, the other one undershot. Well, we're gonna follow these guys. Anti-torpedo torpedoes are popping in here. We're closing in, cool. See if our we have a kinetic and flaxives systems that together work to deal with torpedoes. Now we have anti-torpedo torpedoes popping in there. Interesting indeed. One of the megalodons has zero materials in storage. Ooh, look! They slow down. Now the Gimli is pretty quick too, or not like uber quick, but it's pretty quick for its size. I think it's like 40 meters per second or something like that. Um, 37 is the top speed right now. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. We seem to be able to keep those torpedoes at bay, at least when we have like two of them. Uh, when we have two of them firing torpedoes at the same time, I don't think we can deal with it, but we can deal with one Megalodon's torpedoes by our passive uh, anti-torpedo torpedoes and our speed combined. Well.
Look at that. One of the Megalodons is despawning and the other one is two. Amazing. Amazing. That is uh, basically decided then. Pretty nice. The Gimli is... Uh... Now I accidentally teleported you. The Gimli is superior to two Megalodons too. That's great. Uh... Great thing to know. Then I definitely made the best battleships ever. I hope you liked the display of power here with the Gimli. And uh, you should definitely check it out on the workshop. Check the rules in the description if you want to submit an official one. We'll be back with a little bit more of unofficial battles. Uh, I think this has been a great time. A great episode to kick off the Gimle battles. With first pitching it against the old Draconia. And then pitching it uh, against two Megalodons. Just to prove a point. It's better than the Megalodon. I hope you enjoyed this little video and if you did you should definitely leave a like. Uh, go watch the Building the Gimle series if you haven't already. This is your host Jimmerism and we're signing out until next time. Oh yes indeed. <laughs>